what? I think we should we should do this. Because all those guys that don't come every day when I speak, I should just not come for some days. Okay. Right? Okay. Is that, that good? Can we make that deal? All right, fire away. <laughs> how important is uh, Bird, how important has Berger been over the last year to be able to fill in center than when needed like today or yesterday or Yeah, uh, you know, he's been a real pros pro and he's played all those Excuse me. All those spots um, came in, did a great job last year at the center, and um, you know, and, and like right now with uh, Fusco, he's he's filling in for him. So yeah, he's you know guys like that are really valuable because uh, obviously you get injuries and you get you, know, you got to fill in and figure out a way. Any concern? Of, excuse me. You expect Brandon to be out far? No, I don't think so. I mean, he's he's seen. Tell me if it's better today. So. He probably won't do anything tonight, I wouldn't imagine. We'll probably hold him up. A anybody else going to sit out tonight besides him? Yeah, there'll be a few guys. Anybody you care to, to, that you know about at this yeah, time? I'm just going to have to watch. Okay. <laughs> Count numbers, okay. Yeah, there you go. Mike, you always talk about with guys being able to do more. You always say the more you can do, the longer you can stick around. Is Joe kind of an example of that, just learning to do different things and extending his career as long as he's been able to do it? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, and, and a lot of times guys bounce around from team to team and end up getting in the right system and, you know, works out works out that way. But he's definitely one of those kind of guys that, you know, you get, you get to dress 46 guys on game day. And, um, that's one of the lines I use all the time, all you can do. Does that affect at all what you're going to do with the center spot? Think how long Brandon's on? Um, well, I don't know. I, mean, I don't think he's going to be out there at all, so we'll, fig we'll figure it out. You know, it may not be as soon as I had hoped, but we'll figure it out. Uh, Joe, you're going to be How has Buckley uh, kind of looked before the injury sliding back to the right side? Yeah, that's probably the best I've seen him look since I've been here. Um, done, done a good job in physical, veteran pass protection. So he's looked a lot better. He's got players shifting in and out on both sides of him. Does that ever get difficult for an offensive lineman to kind of get communication and everything down with the players? Uh, you know, one of the big things we try to do is everybody says the same thing. So that the communication is all the same. And that way, you know, when guys go in and out, that doesn't happen. Uh, you know, try, try to talk the same language. <laughs> Can you talk about uh, what it's like with players to play under the waist tonight and the fans? Is it a big deal and when you get out of it? It's kind of like the, the peak of camp for the fans. Yeah, it's it's uh, I think the players get a little bit excited to get underneath the lights. You know, it's it's different. You get in a routine out here every day. You're out here at 2:45, and so now they they get a little little time uh, to rest up this afternoon. And, Got a, should have a large crowd out there, and then they have a day off tomorrow. So I, I anticipate it'll be uh, <coughs> pretty crisp in practice. Any particular <coughs> plans for what you'll do, or will the night practice be similar to the last couple of years? Uh, it'll be similar. We got we have uh, move the ball. We've got a goal line session. We've got a couple two point plays. We've got a team period. Uh, I think we have a red zone seven on seven. Off the top of my head. Uh, got like 20 little things I'm trying to remember. Mike, how, how do you control like the level of contact with uh, on Adrian Peterson in front of the report against the Bengals? Um, I, I don't, I, you know, we're, we're thudding him pretty good right, right now. I think it'll be the same way. Um, Marvin and I talked uh, a little bit last night about, you know, simple things, making sure we're all on the same page with Stuff, so I don't think, you know, I know all those guys. Yeah, so whatever it's such a familiarity, that kind of eliminates the whole worrying about their being a brawl. Or yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm honestly not worried about it because, um, you know, I just, I know our guys, I know their guys, and I think, I think their guys respect me, their defensive guys, at least. And then, uh, so I don't, I don't think it'll be an issue. But we're we're going to address it beforehand. Will this be the first one that they've done in a while too? Or no, they, they had to. No, they've had to. They had the Giants in last year, and they had some of the year before, I think. So they've done it a couple times.
Mike, Andre Smith really speaks well of you, the respect he has for you. In Cincinnati, obviously, you were on different sides of the ball, but how much did you get to know him and how much interaction did you have with Andre during the Bengals years, pretty much? Yeah, well, you know, most, most all those guys. You know, they, they saw they saw me in a different different way because I was coaching the defensive guys. But you know, I was talking to him. You know, nothing. Right. Was there more joking back and forth when you were on the opposite side of the ball in Cincinnati, maybe than there is now when you're more directly over him? Or do you still do you guys still no. joke back and forth? That's the joke. Isn't it? My jokes are usually pointed, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's the same. I just be myself. Good. I think he's come into camp much in much better shape. Uh, he's an extremely hard worker. Um, you know, he continues to get better. I think he wants to be really good. So, uh, you know, good so far. See, Adam Thielen mixed it a lot with that starting offense. Is he a guy that can see more opportunities here? Um, I don't know. You know, Adam's one of those guys. Somebody's out. He jumps in. He knows all the positions. I don't. I, don't, I mean, it's not like it's anything saying, hey, let's get Adam in there for these six plays. Just, just how it works out. It's not, I wouldn't read too much into it. Coach, you've noticed a lot of one on one instruction with uh, the quarterback, Mackenzie Alexander. What kind of things are you going over with him when you're talking to him back? Well, everything really. Uh, you know, sometimes he doesn't line up in the right place, sometimes it's, uh, you know, reminding him. Specific technique on that play. Um, sometimes it's, I mean, it's really everything. You know, with all the young guys, it's pretty much the same. Dr. Treadwell and the young receivers coach, uh, how quickly do you see the rapport developing with Teddy and uh, in the Bull Raiders and the Treadwells and the new guys in camp this year? Uh, I don't know. I, I guess you'd have to ask Teddy. I, you know, I don't. I don't worry too much about the rapport or any of that stuff. I think they all they all work hard and they're all trying to get Teddy predominantly is thrown to Treadwell and Diggs and Thema and Charles Johnson and Jerry's. So they, he usually takes most of those guys. So I mean it's it'll be all last couple for coach, last couple. Will prohibition of the chop block to change much about how you would go into a game? No, nah, we've always tried to play pretty clean. Um, you know, it's a dangerous play, you know, for the defensive lineman, so I've always been kind of for it anyway. You know, and it doesn't eliminate all the cut blocks, but <clears throat> some of the real bad ones get really can. Thanks, right, everyone. Thanks.